A year ago, the share price of Zomato was just 50 rupees, but now it is trading in the range of 190 to 190. So tell me, guys, can we consider this as a buy sell? Absolutely no. If we consider the same share price of Zomato at the time of IPO, it was just 76 rupees, but from that 76, it went up to the highs of 140 to 150, and there it got declined and reached to the all time lows of 50 rupees. So, did that signify a sell sign then? Absolutely no. Because investment is about ownership in the business and it cannot be decided just because of the share price movements. So before making any investment decision, you need to do fundamental research and as well as you need to understand the business. So without doing all these things, you cannot make any investment decision. So without any further delay, let's get into the video. In this video, we will discuss about the birth and rise of Zomato. Zomato was once a big loss making company, but now it's a profitable listed company. So we will discuss everything about Zomato in this video. Whenever we talk about Zomato, the first thing that comes to our mind is online food delivery platform. But Zomato is much more than that. It has four distinct revenue lines. First revenue line, Zomato Hyperpure. Hyperpure is a B2B vertical of Zomato which delivers and supplies the kitchen needs to all the restaurants, hotels and caterers. It's like a one-stop shop for hotels, restaurants and caterers industry. The second line of business of Zomato is Zomato Dining Out. Dining Out is a platform where customers can book tables, view and discover restaurants, read and write reviews and also they can upload photos. The third revenue line of Zomato is Quick Commerce. Blinkit is a quick commerce segment which delivers the groceries in less than 15 minutes. Zomato acquired Blinkit for $569 million in 2022. The fourth revenue line of Zomato is food delivery business. I think it doesn't need that much of introduction to you. So now let's get deep into the revenue breakdown of the Zomato. In the Q3 FA24 report, Zomato announced 3610 crores of revenue. Now let's break it down. 2025 crores is being contributed by the food delivery business, 859 crores is from the Hyperpure, 73 crores is from the Dining Out and 8 crores is from the other verticals and 644 crores is from the Blinkit segment. Zomato's founding story dates back to 2008 when Pankaj Chadha and Deependra Goyal were working at Bain & Company. They envisioned a solution to simplify restaurant discovery and food ordering in India. They started combining restaurant menus online and later they expanded to provide reviews, ratings and food ordering services in India. Initially, they named it as Foodie Bay and later, after several iterations, it was rebranded as Zomato in 2010. Zomato quickly gained traction and later it expanded internationally. In its early days, Zomato caught the eye of Sanju Bhikachandani, who was the founder of InfoH, who first became interested in Zomato by looking at its potential to revolutionize the food industry in India. So Sanju approached Deepinder Goyal and Pankaj Chadha with an investment offer of 4.7 crores by looking at the potential it can create in the future. InfoH became one of the earliest investors in the company, providing crucial funding and supported Zomato's expansion and solidified its position as a leading player in the food tech industry. InfoH's initial investment of 4.7 crores in Zomato back in 2010 grew to almost 633 times by the time of Zomato's IPO. That was the massive return Zomato gave to its earliest investor Sanju Bhikshandani. The data which we have shown is actually posted by the Sanju Bhikshandani in his Twitter handle. As per the latest reports on shareholding data, InfoH owns nearly 13.5 percent and it is now valued at around 22,795 crores. So before getting into the actions of the Zomato's internals, let's understand the industry size and industry behavior. According to the Red Sea, the Indian food services market is projected to exit 100 billion dollars by 2028, growing at a CAGR of 10 to 12 percent. Traditionally, the food services market is very different. The way they used to serve the food, the way they used to order, everything was different. But now everything got changed. The cloud kitchens, online food delivery, quick commerce and everything has revolutionized the food services market in India. So now let's understand the strengths of the company. First and major important point, its market leadership position. Zomato has nearly 55% of market share while its closest rival, Swiggy has 44% of market share. The second point is increasing in the cross order value. As for Q3 FA24 data, the consolidated GO is nearly 12,886 crores which is 47% higher than the earlier year. Third important strength of the company is continuous operating leverage. With most of the cost fixed, the platform enjoys a strong operating leverage. The costs are generally front-order in nature, leading to higher loss in the initial years. Zomato now may be close to leveraging the deep investments in tech and infra completely and from now onwards, it no need to invest more in these segments, so it will be advantageous to the company. And the fourth point is increasing pricing power. As the platform scales, the pricing power grows as the dependence of the ecosystem players on the platform rises. Besides, a large platform provides greater value to the ecosystem players and thus enjoys high pricing power. Hyperpure. 
The hyperpure vertical has steered Zomato firmly into profitability. Hyperpure operates in 10 cities with a farm to fork model that currently provides next day delivery on a wide range of quality ingredients, which include staples, packaged and frozen products, fresh fruits and vegetables, poultry, meat, and other ready to serve products as well. Hyperpure is very important for Zomato because of three reasons. First one is cost efficiency. By eliminating middlemen, Hyperpure keeps its cost low, making it more economical for users to order. High average order value. With an average order value of 1500 rupees and a margin of 10 to 12 percent, Hyperpure's high average order value covers last mile costs and warehouse expenses, contributing significantly to Zomato's profitability. And the most important point here is lower acquisition costs. Unlike other verticals, Hyperpure refrains itself from offering discounts, which remarkably keeps its costs low. And the last important strength of the company is platform fee. So whenever you are ordering the food, there is an extra 5 rupees added to your bill. It is very important for the company financials in order to remain profitable. Zomato started platform fee back in 2023 with 2 rupees per order. Later, it revised its plan into 3 rupees and then into 4 rupees and finally, recently it got revised it into 5 rupees per order. Growing marketing expenses. As per Zomato's Q3 FA24 results, it spent nearly 317 crores on sales promotion and advertising. In the last year, which is in the Q3 FA23, it spent only 293 crores. So which signifies 8.2% increase compared to the last year. This number could keep on increasing given the company must protect its market share from a well-funded player like Swiki. Low entry barriers and competition. While Zomato is the clear market leader today, the chances of disruption are strong, especially from restaurant associations, unions, and other players who could simply undercut the commissions and margins to grab market share. Premium subscribers. Zomato Gold was launched several times and failed, forcing the company to review its pricing multiple times. As of FI23 report, there are 1.8 million paid subscribers for the Gold program, which signifies 10% of its overall customer base. Let's see how much it can scale its business. The major and important threat for the company is the ONDC factor. Not just for Zomato, it is as well as for this Figgy as well. ONDC stands for Open Network for Digital Commerce. It is an initiative by the Government of India to make digital commerce experience fairer, more convenient and innovative. ONDC wants to create a user-friendly platform that eliminates the need for multiple delivery apps, making online shopping easier for everyone. It also wants to increase more choices for consumers and create a level playing field for businesses in digital commerce. If you guys have understood what ONDC is, let us understand how it is going to be a threat for Zomato. The competitive advantage of ONDC is its lower prices. Compared to Swiggy and Zomato, it offers every product at lower cost. First, it may compel Zomato and Swiggy to reassess their pricing strategies to remain competitive. They might need to consider offering discounts or implementing other cost-saving measures to retain their customer base. And the major important point is government-backed initiative. Being supported by the DPIID, ONDC is backed by the government itself. This official support gives ONDC extra credibility. It means that users can trust the platform very much because of its security and the trust which is given by the government. The company has made steady financial progress and has swung into profit recently. It remains to be seen how sustainable this growth is and let's see how it will perform in the future as well. Growth triggers. In the food delivery business, Zomato is having tough competition with Swiggy, but in the quick commerce sector, Blinkit is having tough competition with Zepto. By the way, guys, do you know what is meant by quick commerce and do you know about quick commerce sector? Let's understand it. Quick commerce in the name itself says everything, it's all about the speed. Usually, quick commerce companies try to deliver food or any product in less than one hour, but Zepto and Blinkit are trying to deliver it in less than 15 minutes. The quick commerce sector is growing at a decent CSR but still represents just around 1% of the total domestic grocery market at $620 billion. With a large addressable market of $45 billion, it is set to grow at 10 to 15x its current size by 2025, according to the Red Sea report. So you guys understood what e-commerce sector is. But have you ever thought about it? Why Blinkit is important for Zomato? Three reasons why it is important for Zomato. First, asset utilization. By acquiring a gross and delivery business, Zomato can broaden its scope of operations, expanding product portfolio to a wide range of services throughout the day. Ad revenue. If you ever seen Amazon or Flipkart's website, there is a lot of space for the advertisement. But if you see this Swiggy or Zomato app, there is no scope of monetizing the space. As Blinkit is the quick commerce company, it also has the advantage of being the e-commerce as well. That is why it is very important for Zomato to have the Blinkit. And the last important point, which is building versus buying. Let's say you want to build a company. It takes a lot of amount of money and a lot of efforts. But instead of building it for years, it is very easy if you have the access to capital. You can easily buy the company whatever you want. To build a company like Blinkit, it requires huge capital and time. Blinkit already had developed its foundation and a huge customer base. So Zomato's acquisition of Blinkit seems like a smart move. Now let's understand ESG. By the way, what is ESG? ESG means Environmental Social Governance. In FI23, the company aligned with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to make business sustainable. The company has outlined eight themes. Climate conscious deliveries, waste-free world, 
जीरो हंगर सस्टेनेबल लाइवलीहुड हेल्थी सेफ्टी एंड वेलबींग फॉर ऑल डायवर्सिटी इक्विटी एंड इंक्लूजन कस्टमर सेंट्रिसिटी सस्टेनेबल गवर्नेंस सिक्योरिटी एंड प्राइवेसी नो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट जोमेट इज डूइंग टू बिकम एनवायरमेंटल फ्रेंडली फर्स्ट वन जोमेट इज कंप्लीट टू हंड्रेड परसेंट ईवी बेस्ड डिलीवरी बाय 2030 सेकंड पॉइंट इट हैज मोर देन 50 पार्टनरशिप साइंड विद वेरियस प्लेस इन द टू व्हीलर ईवी इकोसिस्टम इंक्लूडिंग ओएम बैटरी सर्विस ऑपरेटर एंड ईवी रेंटल कंपनीज जोमेट इज अवार्डेड द बेस्ट ईएससी परफॉर्मेंस इन सस्टेनेबल ट्रांसपोर्टेशन बाय ट्रांसफॉर्मेंस फोरम्स इन अप्रैल 2023 द सेकंड सेक्शन इन द ईएसजी व्हिच इज सोशल Let's understand what Zomato is doing as per their social responsibility. Zomato has collaborated with Feeding India. Feeding India is a not-for-profit organization designing interventions to reduce hunger among undeserved communities in India. If you look at the tweet, Deependra Gill himself said this: In a span of six months, they have doubled their impact from one lakh meals in 2021 to now they are serving nearly two lakh meals. It was actually tweeted one year back. The second initiative is Oxygen for India. This initiative was started to provide oxygen and related supplies to hospitals and patients for free. So, if you look at the feeding for India, so whenever you are ordering a food, there is a section in the bill in which you can find it. Feeding India, and whenever you are ordering a food, it two rupees will be contributed to the Feeding India. And the third and most important section of the ESG. governments five out of eight board members are independent directors so when there is higher number of board members who are independent there will be chance of making rational decisions there are no pecuniary transactions with the non executive independent directors of the company apart from the payment of annual remuneration and sitting fee for attending meetings of the board members and committee members but there are few concerns arise at the time of blinkit acquisition and they were duly responded by the management While Zomato passes the initial governance test, our AI system apart checks such quality to matters very deeply and across thousand plus parameters. Hence, this video must not be considered as an investment recommendation or a comprehensive research. Zomato's continued investments in tech, innovation, customer centricity will remain a key factor in determining the winner in this sort of an industry. While it is difficult to predict which vertical will do best, the greatest solace for Zomato investors. is that it has multiple high growth verticals and as well as the high potential line of businesses it is going to be an interesting journey for sure savart is a sebi registered investment advisor the purpose of this content is to educate and not recommend any particular security please remember that investments are subject to market risks please conduct thorough due diligence or seek professional guidance before making any investment do not believe in any speculation thank you for watching the video if you like our content please like and share this video to your friends and subscribe to our channel